It's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, mm -hmm. although we're in the daylight savings time, so it's actually 8 p.m. here in the East. Oh, time. my goodness. So you are I, just going to have to let that go. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> no plan to do that. Welcome, Adventures. I'm your guide, Sean McZoo. And uh, this is the Reptile Show Reporter. It's actually 5 p.m. on the West. Uh, I forgot to mention that. As usual, the headmaster of the Community Academy is my co-host. Tonight, we're going to discuss cage evaluations or enclosure evaluations or whatever you want to call them. But um, we're going to talk about it in the perspective of communities, and then we're going to try to generalize it to other things. So let's see who we got here in the in the uh, chat. Nate's already here. He was the first one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put him up there. And let's put his picture here. Let's see. There we go. There's Nate. And then who's next on the list? Nate, then James Cross is early. Wow, both of you before this start, huh? Let's see if we can find the uh, DIY chameleon guy anywhere here. Let's see, there <laughs> he is. And let's see who's next on the, uh, the hit parade here. Let's see, Nate, Two Turtle Tom is here early. We appreciate him here being here. And then here's Tom and his daughter Paige there. Make sure you uh, tell uh, Paige we shout her out today. Shouted her out today. I can't speak. I didn't take a nap. Maybe be a problem later on. We'll see what happens there. Um, I just wasn't tired yet. So <laughs> like a little kid, I like to go to bed late and get up late. So um, uh, Mikey Ben is here. Ooh, where's Mikey Ben? Let's see. It'd be under M, Sean. All right. There's Mikey Ben. Uh, all right. And let's see who else is here. Oh, hey. Um, Chris from Zev Green Reptiles. His podcast is going to be out next Tuesday. So he did a, we had a great chat on the podcast, talked all about different things. And uh, let's see, where's here? Where's Chris? Uh, there we go. We need a better picture of you, Chris, there. In fact, you should send me one before Tuesday so I can put it on the podcast to release. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got in the comments. Um, Eliza Ann. There we go. Let's see. I'm just going to do Eliza alone because she's between Bill and I, so she doesn't need to have Bill on both sides there. Um, all right. Let's see who else is here. Um, Facebook user, hey, all. So Facebook user, hey, all. So go ahead and tell us who they are because we can't see it. Um, oh, it's probably set. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, can you, all right. These are right. Um, Stephanie Payne is here. We'll put her up. I don't know if she's the same as the other Facebook user, but let's go ahead and get her there. She's usually late. It's almost uh, it's a few minutes just into the show, and she's here already. This is great. Let's see. Uh, Mossy Incarnations, which we don't know. Who is this? Do you know, Bill? I don't. All right, so if you're going to be here again next time, show send us a photo um, to uh, Sean at Reptile Show Reporter or any of my other places, and uh, we can uh, get your picture on the intro here. So I still haven't done the um, – oh, there we go. Wait a minute, that wasn't it. These, these are moving so fast I can't keep up. Howard Redder, okay. Do I have Howard? I think I have Howard's picture, don't I? Yeah. There we go. This is Howard, right? Yep, yeah, that's Howard. All right, there we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go. Oh, I got rid of the branding, and I got I didn't get rid of the uh, the comment there. So let's see. Welcome, Liza Ann. Must know Mossy. Okay, there we go. And uh, okay. Yeah, All right, Liza Ann's just friendly. All right, there we go. Wait a minute, just put the music though. <laughs> So I'm tired, so I'm more than a little silly tonight. So uh, I apologize in advance, but yeah, I know, whatever. That's what you got. You came here to see us, and you got me being a little tired. So uh, anyways, all right. So any announcements, Bill? Uh, other than, uh, yes, to Turtle Tom, I am going minimalistic today. The, uh, the uh, studio is in complete chaos. Uh, due to a, a huge filming project that I am doing. And so 
there's it's just a mess and i said okay i'm just gonna be here so uh, other than that no i don't other than i'm uh really loving my new schedule my uh, i have daily videos uh on the youtube channel and they all have uh themes and i'm, I'm really enjoying that so anybody wants to uh, uh loves their chameleons check out the uh, youtube channel chameleon academy and join us at 5 a.m pacific we got a lot of really great people that, uh, All right, Bill. I'm going to ask you: Are you getting enough sleep now, Sean? Are you getting more sleep than you used to? I did very good for two days, and these last two nights have been a complete disaster. And so tonight, I, I ha I'm getting back on to do it right. All right, we appreciate that. We'll ask you tomorrow morning. If anyone sees him tomorrow morning, make sure you ask him. Um, yeah. Nate said that he got his finale today. I saw the picture on uh, on something, one of these. I think it was uh, Discord, but uh, um, that was a really cool finale. So, um, all right. So, let's see. Um, what else are we talking about here? So, that's all your um, announcements, Bill? Well, you got to say hello to Blaze. All right. Hi, Blaze. <laughs> nope. He's a Shiba Inu. He doesn't do, he doesn't do anything. That he doesn't, he doesn't have a uh, – there you go. You got the big chameleon sticking out there, and you got the Shibu Inu, Un, Shibu Inu licking your arm, so that's good. All right. That's right. So from my perspective, um, the microscope count is still at seven, so we're trying to get rid of, of what, uh, three of them and then two more very soon. So the two more we're going to wean at the end of the week, and uh, there'll be uh, three for uh, – what have you, but uh, podcast 18 starring Jackie Rice, the silk moth mom who has 28,000 followers on YouTube in just three short months. Learn, learn how to, how she did it um, with shorts essentially, but uh, you can learn a lot more. Chris green, as I said in the starting was actually, we've got that one in the can. I almost got it completely uh, um, edited. And yesterday I spent a little time with the bio dude. So I got a podcast with him that'll be next. So it'll be Chris about um, reptile shows and the bio dude about his whole adventure. And so that's where we're at at this point. We have no more to announce at that. So social media pill pillars are still there and what have you. So that's all I got today, Bill. Yeah, so, Josh Halter, bio dude. He's got a great story. Yes, very, very good story. But I won't... Uh, I won't ruin the podcast by telling all of it in advance, but it's a really good story. I still got to, it's going to be out, um, what, the uh, 23rd, 20, 24th of uh, April. So it'll be a little while, a um, couple weeks from now. But uh, anyways, all right. So, Bill, yes. uh, did you ever get that graphic to me? or I did. You did. All right. So go ahead and start talking about it. I'll see if I can find the graphic and put it up. All right. Well, <clears throat> uh, those of you who, from my channel, you know, on Monday, I released a, a, a fundamentals video that was about the Forest Edge 5 plus 5, which was, it's a checklist on how to uh, rate your husbandry, just to make sure you get all the different points. And of course, I specialize in chameleons. And so it is uh, specifically for chameleons needs. But Sean said, yeah, okay, how about we talk about how it could apply to uh, any animal and is absolutely correct. This is uh, chameleons are live in the same world as every other animal. And so uh, we have, okay. All right. Now I'm being attacked. Now I'm being, <laughs> I love you too. And so uh, this could be adapted very easily to just about any other especially arboreal animals. Uh, you, you could use the same thing for emerald tree boas, uh, chihuahuas, geckos, uh, anything. Uh, I, you may have to adapt it just a little bit for the, um, for the uh, terrestrial animals. And uh, okay, for fish, uh, okay, we're, we're getting way, way away mm -hmm. from it. But um, we're going to be talking about uh, how you can apply a, something like this to uh, any of the reptiles that you may have. And so um, let's see, Nate says, 
I've applied what I've learned with keeping chameleons and have applied it to better my other herbs. Yeah, and really when I do my uh, my interviews uh, with the Chameleon Academy, I do my outer fringes where I uh, interview other people who work with other reptiles, it's amazing how parallel our paths are. Like when I talk to Patrick Holmes who specializes in green tree pythons, uh, yeah, so so much different than chameleons and except the care is so similar because of course anything that lives in the trees uh, are what i'm doing with chameleons is the same thing as what they're doing with green tree pythons these are animals that are in the trees and we're trying to figure out what life is like in the trees and so there's enormous parallels between what i'm doing and what many other people in the community are doing i just wrap it in the chameleon wrapper so, um, let's see, Nate is saying the biggest improvement I noticed was use in white light for my other reptiles. Okay. All right. All right. So here's your graphic, Bill. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's it. I was able to get it up there. So why don't you go through it for us? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, the forest age five plus five. It's 11 elements to check off. And uh, we start off with the forest edge, which is just a basic, you're looking at the cage and you're saying, does the chameleon have the ability to go into the open space or hidden? And uh, chameleons like this, this forest edge concept, it's a biological concept, it talks about like when the, the forest ends and the meadow starts, uh, of course, we interpret it a little bit differently, but the chameleon uh, the, the the forest part is very important for the chameleon because chameleons don't have a whole lot of defenses except not being seen. And so this is, uh, we need to give a chameleon the ability to not be seen. So many of these, uh, anybody does, looks at the cage reviews, so many of the cages where you see a chameleon sitting there pawing at the glass or the side of the cage, wanting to get out it's because they don't feel confident they don't feel secure where they are so they need to go find someplace where they're going to be uh, secure and being out in the open and saying hello to the world doesn't mean that they don't need a place uh, where they can go to be secure or simply that they know that it exists uh you know they don't have to use it but if they know it, it exists then they know that's a good place to stay uh so uh, the the forest edge just the looking at the high level uh is important and then we get to uh the uh the five gradients and that's the uh the progression from one extreme to another uh and uh it, this is we usually think about it in heat that's the easiest one because you have a heat bulb okay that's the hottest and then you have the coolest which is the other end of the cage uh, and that's that's a gradient within space, but this is, uh, uh, the husbandry is a great, is all of these um, ebbing and flowing, intersecting and overlapping in space and time. And so that's where we have our lights that come up, lights that go down, and uh, the uh, ebb and flow of humidity from day to night. And then the final one is uh, security. That's the one that is most, uh most forgotten in chameleon cages i've called it the security the privacy gradient the exposure gradient it, it's i i first uh, presented this in 2002 in an a uh an article with the uh, chameleonnews.com so this the origins of this concept are over 20 years old and i've been working with it since so this isn't anything new although it is updated. I, I did add a couple of other things. And then the uh, the last five is the, I, I call them the branches. And that's, they're functional branches saying, okay, you've got the heat, you've got the heat gradient. Well, do you have a branch that makes it uh, usable? You've got the UVB. Well, do you have a branch that uh, allows a chameleon to get to UV index of three? And as obvious as these things seem, it's uh, surprising how often these are forgotten. People put a UVB bulb up on top of the cage. 
but you can if you know how that uvb dissipates you could say hey wait a minute you don't have a branch that allows him to use that uvb and uh, anybody that has a chameleon kit immediately <laughs> okay you probably don't have a uh, a branch that allows you to use that uvb and so you, whether it's uh, uh, sleeping eating drinking these are just check marks to say okay is the cage functional do you have the gradients and then is it functional that the chameleon can use these so uh, that is the summary uh let's see got uh trying to look at in the uh the comments here let's see uh, chris is saying the fogger is a big help with other species for sure use it with my iguana and tegu yeah it, it's um <clears throat> It's uh, amazing how the fogger works with, uh, with with all with all the reptiles I've been using it with, and obviously we've got to be smart about how we apply all of these things. Uh, but but this is this is really meant as a checklist just to make sure everything is there. Uh, you, every animal and really species of chameleon may have different values, and so. We need to know what those values are. And this is the checklist just to make sure we've actually implemented it and applied it. And so, okay, so why don't we start here, Bill, and just go through the checklist out of order because I'm gonna I'm gonna do it a different way, but um and talk about what we could apply to other reptiles. I think the first thing we should look at is security. That's I think applicable. I don't think there's a single reptile that doesn't need security. Can you think of anyone that doesn't feel the need for security at some point? <laughs> I don't know. A Komodo dragon probably just kind of sits there, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> it still, it still needs to feel like it can go back somewhere and, and be uh, secure, but maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? Does a Komodo dragon need security or does it make its own? I guess a. Uh, you know, Godzilla doesn't need its security, but it still goes back to a, a certain place. Yeah, it still so, goes back to the ocean. Got to make sure you got yeah. an ocean. So that's, uh, there you go. So I think security, you need to think about with every reptile. Um, yeah. So I think that's the very first thing. And then as it comes to how long you can live or what have you, um, the first thing that goes wrong is you get dehydrated. That's, uh, you know, yep. oxygen is the first, but we're not talking about there's no oxygen in the thing. So um, what is Tom asking? What is Ben asking? Where does ventilation come in? Mm -hmm. And ventilation is just a an, uh, an execution. And usually we think about that as humidity. It could be heat as well. But uh, that is all packed into humidity. Whereas I would say security is the one that people most uh, uh, forget to implement. And the UVB basking branch is the one that's most uh, most forgotten. The uh, humidity gradient is, there is so much packed into that. Because that, that incorporates your entire hydration. And part of that is the, ventila uh, the ventilation. So... Um, uh, that that would be, I mean, I could put wind flow on here, but we control the wind flow to bolster or dissipate humidity. And so uh, I put it there. All right. So here's some um, mossy incarnations. Been following you for a long time and adjusted to chameleon knowledge and experience doesn't have a chameleon yet so um okay that's great send us a pic and we'll make sure we put it on next time all right so i think we should go with the um rule of threes which they say um is something you could have you could go with three minutes without oxygen which i don't think we're gonna this is kind of so we're not gonna wow. worry about that we're, we're gonna assume that everybody has oxygen flow in their tank um you could go three days without water and maybe up to three weeks without food. So let's go water. Oh, I haven't heard about this. Yeah. Let's go water next. Um, uh, so humidity and drinking branch. Um, 
a branch isn't necessary for all species because there's different types of species. Like, for example, my frill dragon, I actually drip her right into his mouth. Every morning I just drip into his mouth. I soak the cage, but I drip into his mouth and he drinks. Um, the pectinata does drink out of a bowl, usually, usually drinks when I spray it, but drinks out of uh, what have you. But um, tortoises drink out of a drinking container, um, but they also get humidity during the night and what have you. But it's really important that you have a way to get them the humidity they need. So I think that's applicable. Snakes go into their water bowl and spin around and for security as well as for humidity. Um, what other species of uh, different creatures would, could we think of? Well, yeah, when we start to get into, obviously, branches because we've got an arboreal mm -hmm. uh, lizard. But uh, well, a place to drink, being... a place where they're safe and they can drink. That's yep. you know, they have to be safe because if they're not safe, you know that's the end. <laughs> and if they, you know, if they're uh, up for prey, um, that's the uh, except for uh, except for the Komodo dragon, which is not a which yeah. isn't a prey of anything. Although yeah, well, the reason why I have to do this with chameleons is because there are instances. Since we're talking about uh, setting things up in three-dimensional space, you can have uh, a dripper dripping on leaves and the chameleon can't get a hold of the, those leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot easier when you have a terrestrial animal because you, I mean, if you have a, a water bowl, they can get at it. But with chameleons, I mean, you can have UVB, but the chameleon can't get at it. You can have uh, water without the chameleon being able to get at it. And uh, Bill, may we copy this list to share with others? Uh, Les, and um, yes, yes, uh, you let me know what you need. Uh, this is, there actually is a, uh, on the chameleonacademy.com uh, website, uh, there, there is a web page all about the Forest Edge 5 plus 5. Uh, yeah, you could even take a picture of this if I move this because it's not the Reptile Show Reporter basis, but. Um... You could it's like I already got the Chameleon Academy on it, but um yeah, I mean Eliza, I, I can I can send you this graphic. Okay. Uh so uh you just let me know what you had in mind and I will make sure you are set. Let me see. Well, let me go ahead and I will say I, I didn't have see so I'll put a link in. Although I didn't, uh, I don't have this graphic on the web page. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> okay. All right. So what's next on the bottom of the list? Eating, right, is um, is probably the next most important thing to a creature. Um, that's an eat. You say an eating branch, but we could just say a place where they could eat um, safely. Eat, you know, whether it's a food bowl, a dish. Um, whether you create a bowl above the whatever, or you're you're putting your greens out on um, a different place, or you're you're making sure that the uh, the snake can actually find the food. Um, if it's one of these that sends heat, you want to make sure it's warm, and you know, or what have you. Um, what else can you think of, Bill? Uh, yeah, I think I mean every every animal is going to have their uh you know it's been a long time since i thought about other animals i know they're the lesser reptiles in your opinion bill i understand yeah but well, the uh, rest must still have those so um <laughs> so you know a place to eat a place that a place that's safe a place where you're if you're if you're here you're hydrated um then you might want to eat so you could find a place and it could be a good place to eat where they can you know if it's a chameleon and where they can go ahead and shoot the um it's it's food or if it's a um if it's something else it can get to it or it can climb to it or it feels safe enough to come down from this this the the branch to eat so um that's good okay yeah so well and, and i had to put the eating branch on because <laughs> there are times where well and well okay it was it was just one of those things me forgetting to have, put in, use a food dish and you don't put it anywhere near the where the peck can go you know yeah i mean that's i've done that i found myself doing that mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah, I I have a beautiful cage, and then say, wait a minute, I don't have a place where I can put my feet or run cup. Okay, so sleeping branch. What's that's a that's a place to hide. It could be a hide it with snakes yep. and other animals. It could be a hide. It, tortoises sometimes go into a, a hide in places like that. Snakes do that. Um, some of the uh, um, terrest or the um, what do you call them? Uh, not terrestrial. The uh, whatever it is. The uh, 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 different animals can go to different places. Um, you know, you don't want to put a place for the tortoise to climb up a small ladder and uh, go into a hide because it's never going to do it. Um, but you want to make sure there's a place where it can hide and get some good sleep because sleep is important, Bill. I think we talked about that earlier in the show. You need uh, humans need eight hours of sleep. You know, if they yes. were put in a closed environment without the knowledge of time, you would go to eight and a quarter hours would be your normal sleep. And then you'd, you'd actually have a 24 and, and a quarter hour day. That's how it would normally be the average person. Really? So, just remember, if you know, that's that's what really happens if you if you do the experiments and over time and time again, um, that's the way things are. Anaballistics here, so we'll go ahead because this is us, Bill, and show anaballistic here. Um, there we are. Welcome, thanks for being here. And I got to put the graphic back up because we're here. No one wants to look at us, Bill. That's I okay. Graphic, I'm sure. All right, where are we? Well, at you here? could. Uh, are you able to do it as? I don't know if I'm able to, because it's so wide, it doesn't show us. Like, like, oh, you know what I could do? I could add it as a um, a presentation, like a a video file. Could I add it like a video file? I don't know, like a slide. I don't know if I could add it like a slide. Um, how would I do it, Bill? Do you you knew the software I think better? Sure. Than Are you doing the share screen? Um, no, I was doing a um, uh, it's just oh. in my branding section. Oh, do share screen. So just sure. open it in your uh, your browser. Okay, I got you. Okay, let's see how I do that. Let's see if I can figure it out. Um, okay, um, I will open it in my browser first. That's the first thing I should do. Let's find it. Um, there it is. And let's go ahead and get back and find it and share screen. Uh, where's the share screen button, Bill? I might have said present. Well, well, under present. Yeah, there we go. Share screen. And it doesn't a window. And that's not a window. Uh, entire screen. Um, Chrome tab. Uh, it's not in here, Bill. What am I doing wrong? Let's see. It's, it's up and under. Oh, it's up under. Let's see how I did this. Let's see. Oh, come on, people. This is uh, bad on my part. But uh, anyways, let's see what I can do here. Um, I need to learn something today. So yeah, uh, it's unfortunate. Let's see how I can open this otherwise. How would I open this? This is in the browser. Um, here, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can do it. Okay, that's good. This is just in uh, Windows Pictures or whatever you call it. It's, um, let's see if I can open this file in some other way. Okay. Sorry, people. We're being boring here. Maybe I should put the uh, music back on. Um, open with... Uh, well, okay. Now you can... Uh, do you, you see uh, up oh, on the screen? Uh, let's see how we do this. Go back to. I, I am trying to. Yes, share. Bill did it. There Bill knows how to do it. All right. So Bill was uh, good. At, how did you do that, Bill? What did you actually do? You um. Did you put it on a different thing, or what did you? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I've got a whole lot of noise going on here. Okay. Um, uh, so how did you get this to pop up like that? Uh, I just opened it in the browser and okay. then uh, share, shared the screen. Hmm. I didn't figure out how to open a browser, but okay. All right. So there we are. So we've got, we're up to sleeping branch. So we've got heat, UVB, and light to cover that's left on the different, on different animals. 
Um, let's start with white light, except or, except for nocturnal animals, which still need to know day versus night because if they have all night, they won't know when their night should be, right? Is there any animal that doesn't need any light at all to know whether it's day night or not? Uh, unless you're unless you're raising things that live in a cave, I right. so I guess cave trolls or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, yeah, everything everything I think so uh, we white light with. is necessary for almost any animal, at least to be able to see it. Um, even if it's a nocturnal animal, the different lights could do that, but okay. Yeah, and I think that that's and more than just turning light on and off, this is something that we need to consider uh, as far as what our reptiles can see, because they, what we think is white light, the visible spectrum is just for humans. Uh, reptiles, at least chameleons, can see beyond our spectrum and they can see into the UVB and uh, who knows what the world looks like to them. And by bringing them in captivity, we don't know how much we're sending them for a loop in changing what their world looks like because i'm imagining there's some colors that they don't see anymore in captivity because we don't have the light to properly show it so i think that's really important for us to consider uh all of these different frequencies that we've got uh that uh, reptiles can see and mm -hmm. just because we have a, a basking light and a UVB light that lights the cage so we can see, it doesn't mean we're giving them adequate uh, adequate light that they can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm, I went back to trying to look at this thing, Bill. <laughs> I'm obsessed with how to get my browser open. But anyways, I'll do that uh, on my own time. <laughs> well, you just go to file. <laughs> Is, are you on Chrome? I went to file and I and it, it wanted me to open Internet Explorer. I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> but <All> um, right. <laughs> I, you know, these darn Windows computers are a pain in the neck. All right. So what we have left is heat, which could be done in different ways, and UVB. So why don't we tackle heat? Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, uh... I mean, every reptile needs everything. I mean, ectothermic, the, the heat becomes something that's very important to them. Sure. Still, and, even the reptile, you know, as long as they're not, uh, you know, negative 273 Kelvin or something like that, or uh, or zero Kelvin, um, which is uh, whatever it is, uh, zero Kelvin, then they need heat. <laughs> you know, whether it's available from the normal air or from a light or from a heat bulb or from anything, you need to have heat. So, you need to consider where the heat is. You need a uh, you need some kind of a heat gun to figure out what the temperature is where they're at, and um, and what have you a, a thermometer to make sure they're not going in and out of different things that, over time, and and so what have you. Any any animal that wouldn't need heat? Yeah, I, I don't know that because we need heat. Yes, even us endotherms need heat because that would be very cold if. It, you know, I was uh, my office was 64 degrees on Monday, Bill, and I was freezing. I had to turn on heat because <laughs> the heat was off. So uh, something broke in the heating. So that was not warm. I wasn't capable of surviving, even though I'm supposed to be. Uh, but um, but this just means you have what they need for mm -hmm. heat, even if that means that you have a, a hide that has uh, all sorts of towels or stuff. So your hamster can go in and. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and keep themselves warm. I mean, that's that's taking care of the heat. That's good. Okay. Then probably the most controversial on this whole list, UVB. Now, for chameleons, it's not controversial at all. There's no, no. UVB. We should have it, and that's it. But other reptiles, what do you think, Bill? <laughs> oh well, I mean, every every community has to go through this themselves and to figure out what is important for their particular animal and uh, i see i, I know there's a, there's uh debates raging as to whether this particular reptile needs uvb etc and mm -hmm. we've gotten away with uh some reptiles amphibians not using uvb so i'll, I'll leave that up to the community to figure out their balance between dietary d3 and uvb 
Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, chameleons have made it very simple mm -hmm. that if they, you don't do UVB, you get MBD, you die a horrible death, and you learn your lesson. But they don't. They, they just suffer. So that's a well, yes. really yes. thing, yes. uh, thing that you, you lose your friend and they suffer in the end. So that's. Mm -hmm. a, but I think we've done a pretty good job in the community of, uh, I mean, we still see MBD, but we've done a pretty good job saying UVB over and over and over again. Yeah, And because of all the new lights that have come out that are mm -hmm. really good at uh, UVB and even some of them that are too good that could uh, fry its insides out. But um, if you get to yeah. a point, but uh, I think there's a, there's a good way to do it. Not, you know, not back in the eighties and nineties when we, when we thought we were doing the best we could and try to get them outside and you know, on a sunny day or what have you. But, uh, but yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. So, we got the whole thing, didn't we, Bill? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the these are these are just at such a high level mm -hmm. that it's just up to everybody. I mean, I I, I go into uh, very detailed details uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to chameleons, but uh, when you're applying it to a gecko or an iguana, then uh, or a tortoise, you come up with your own way of uh, of what it takes to get the check mark mm -hmm. okay. and and actually for next week i'm going to be when i do my reviews uh for those who don't know i do cage reviews on my uh youtube channel on tuesdays generally and <clears throat> and i use this as my checklist and so i'm actually going to put uh for next week i'm going to start having things to be checked uh, on the screen, so not just me talking. And, wow. Uh, and so, I mean, the, the whole purpose of it is I want it to become so repetitious. Mm -hmm. And for people, who, who, whomever follows me and watches my stuff, mm -hmm. I want it to become so second nature to them that it's just natural, that they don't have to think about it. And so when they see, when they're online and they're trying to help somebody else, I mean, there. You go online. There's so many people. They're always wanting help with their chameleon cage, and the more we can <clears throat> empower our community, the community helpers, the people who actually care enough to help these people over and over and over again. I mean, I, all these tools. When you're creating these tools, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. You gonna be okay over there, Bill? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so when if you look in the whole dynamic of the community, one of the things that when I create these this checklist and these tools like this, I have those people in mind that are helping other people. The people on chameleon forums, the people on Facebook that spend their days helping other people be able to take care of their chameleon and by putting together tools like this i hope that i am supporting the people that are actually out there on the front lines helping the newcomers uh you know, we all have our our place in the community and when we support each other we're we're a team that helps with all of these people coming in. And I tell you, the people that are the helping the newcomers, um, they have such a hard job because they have to do it over and over and over again, repetition every single day. And the person coming has never seen it before. And so it's totally new to them. So the things that these people are, re <laughs> yes, <laughs> these things that people are asking the ones helping them have just have just said it every single day and so there's a there's so much patience that is required that anything i can do to help those people do their job better i mean that's what i that's what i'm going to do and i'm i'm hoping that a checklist like this if i go over it over it over it, over it it becomes second nature and it makes the frontline workers job a whole lot easier and we really appreciate you for that, Bill, because you make that stuff so much easier. I, I, I don't do the front line as much as I used to back uh, before I did the podcast and the live shows. But um, but yes, uh, it's still it's uh, it's great. 
Um, let's see. Let them live. Oh, that that is cool. That is cool. And that, it's here for forever to, to be on uh, Facebook and uh, and YouTube. You can go back and look at these comments. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's great. Yes, that is one great. of the best things someone can say to me. That's awesome. Okay, so next week, Bill, uh, yeah. and the next week after that, the next two Wednesdays, I will be on the road. So I'm going to be doing the show, anyways. I don't even know what the top. The next week's topic is going to be the Toledo Reptile Show, which is a new one that I'm going to go see uh, this Saturday. And the week after that, I don't know what it's going to be. So there may be some adjustability to the start time, or or you know, not not in the. It's going to be around eight o'clock, but I may you know I may you know if I'm on the road and can't stop or whatever. But now that this new this new software you can actually do streamer, you can actually do from your phone. I could do the run the whole show from my phone, so. If we get desperate and I'm not at a hotel at the night, uh, we could do that. But um, yo, here, let's talk about this. This is more important. Thank you. Just like a drop, just like a pebble dropping in the water, Bill. It just keeps going waves and they build as time goes on. Now, at some point, the, the pebble gets to become a, a, a tidal wave, but uh, <laughs> but you haven't gotten to be that way, I guess. So we won't say that. But so everybody needs to know if we're a little late um, that that may be why, because I'm just trying to get a good a good signal. But uh, yes, uh, two turtle Tom is asking. I'm getting this. I'm so distractible tonight. Um, yes, Seth took over. Seth is sharing it with another individual. Uh, Seth, you can see um, um, on one of the podcasts, one of the very first five podcasts that I did. He's been on the live show. He hasn't been on the live show. Just did a podcast with me. Um and so he was there last year, but it wasn't his. And I think it is the same hall. So it's it's an it's it's a small venue, but that's what the small some of the smaller shows have been so much better for individual vendors because they don't have competition. People do better, and people get to hang out and talk. I've had a lot a significant amount more of interaction at these little venues, and they're neat. Um, doesn't show a whole bunch of things. You can't see, you know you can't spend ten hours there, but uh, you, you can if you start talking to people, but um, but they they turn out really good. Um, so, anyways, anyone else any thoughts or um, questions for tonight, or should we just call it quits? Oh, Bill, you want to say something? Well, I mean, I'm I'm interested. Uh, if you look at this this Forest Edge five plus five, is there anything that isn't isn't um, clear? If you you were going to use it, uh, going to take this and apply it to your cage or uh, help uh, use this to help you go through someone else's cage to, to knock off all the points. Is there anything that isn't as clear as it could be? Because I, everything that I do evolves because I take feedback and I make it better. So, Bill, I got one feedback on the order of the right column. Okay. So I would put the sleeping branch on the bottom next to security. So that moves the drinking branch up next to humidity and the eating branch up next to UVB. I would even probably maybe move the, the eating branch up and move the UVB next to UVB. But that's just weird things that idiosyncrasies of my personality that probably don't matter to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I see what you are saying. Mm -hmm. You you hear what I'm saying? You're gonna just ignore it, okay? <laughs> I'm going to take that into account. Uh, yeah. Well, this is the it's first just, time that a weird guy that it would do it, all kinds of crazy things differently. But this it doesn't is the mean first it's time that on. in this graphic is the first time that they have been arranged as such. But now I see. Hmm. Well, maybe I've made a mistake by pointing out that detail that'll that'll cause you to destroy the graphic. But uh, that's my job, Bill. It's a, it's a, you know you're always trying to get me in trouble with more reptiles and more things to do and more uh, more uh, live shows and more podcasts and more more opportunities with different oh. millions. I always try to get you with uh, different things, ways of doing things. Oh, so, you know you darn know. well when I ask you a question, I want the absolute honest and I want the feeling. Not the solution, the feeling. There's something about this that bothers me. That's all I need because then I'll think about it. 
But Let's see. Yeah. Oh, Mossing <laughs> Incantation. That bothers me, so. <laughs> Incarnation. Do you have a separate branch for heat basking in UVB, or you're trying to get both in one spot? That is up to you. Uh, we, I have in the past tried to have them both go to the same spot, so I'll angle the UVB and the heat. Uh, and and I just think that's a that's a nice way of doing it. I'm not going to use a mercury vapor uh, because it's so hard to get the right temperature when at the right UV index. Um, so I have separate lights and I try to, and I have in the past tried to, uh, put them to one spot on one branch. Uh, that becomes a bit of a challenge, especially when you are, when I am teaching, uh, something to people. And then I see people really going through a lot of effort to try to achieve that. And the thing is with chameleons in particular, they they've kind of given us a gift. Uh, they can see UVB, and for whatever reason, they will bask in the heat, and then they will bask in the UVB separate. So you, we chameleon keepers, can separate them and have two totally different branches if we want to. Um, and 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 I think they they give us that because they don't have the ability to. Uh, get out of heat when they are burning. So you know what? Uh, you give and take. We take what we can take when we can get. I was surprised by sleeping branch, mainly because mine sleeps on their money tree, but I have lots of branches to be used for sleeping and drinking. I have two branches for eating when I hand feed. Uh, the sleeping branch, I have that in there so people think about it. Uh, that is the one time that chameleons truly want to feel secure. And even if you have a panther chameleon that just is okay with everything and just uh, sits out in the open and sleeps out in the open, when you bring in a chameleon for the first time, they want to feel like they're safe. And, uh, and they want to find a place where they can sleep and feel safe. If they don't find a place that they feel safe when to sleep, they won't be happy with the cage. And so this is the thing when we get where the chameleon is sitting there pawing out the door. They're not feeling comfortable and people are wondering why. Well, give them a sleeping branch, which makes them feel safe and see what happens. So it's there. So we uh, we keep it in mind. And that's a good idea because a sleeping branch is really important. And if a chameleon doesn't feel like it can sleep and be safe, that's it's bad for them. They they wander all over the place. They look lost. So I've I've seen that. I've seen that I've forgotten the sleeping branch or branch to be more covered or what have you. That's out of the heat, out of the UVB. Um, you know, not a drinking or mini branch, but the sleeping branch just becomes one of those things. So I'm glad you put it in there, Bill. All right. Okay. Any other thoughts or concerns, or should we end the show tonight? Oh, that's uh, that's it. And by the way, everybody, thank you very much for your feedback. Let me, and if you have feedback in the future, let me know. I mean, I am there. We're there uh, talking. Uh, I've got lives in addition to this one three times a week. Uh, I'm there on the chat. There are Apple, and you got my email. There are Apple ample opportunities for you to give me feedback. Please give me feedback. This is something that I value from my, what I call my, my inner circle community, that I get the honest feedback. And I mean, Sean knows before something goes out, I will often send it to him and I want him to rip it apart. And, <laughs> and I'm I, good at that, Bill. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I value I hold back. <laughs> you because I'm not looking for you guys to say, oh, Bill, good job, pat, 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 pat. I want you guys to find all of the holes before it goes out into the world where, you know, they are going to rip it apart. So help me make sure it, uh, it, it can't get ripped apart. And once it's out, like right now, this is out, give me feedback. I mean, when yeah. I came out with this originally, it was the Forest Edge 4 plus 4 back in 2020. And it was 
through feedback and using it and seeing how other people use it that I said, okay, I've got to break up white light and heat. I, I just assumed, okay, white light, everybody knows, 12 on, 12 off. But yeah, you can't assume that. And um, so, uh, and, and then I broke up uh, the heat and the UVB basking because, you know, you don't, don't assume it. Let's make sure we get two check marks. So uh, let me know. Give me feedback. I'm, uh, I like feedback. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Thanks, Bill. We'll be back again next week around 8 o'clock on the East. Um, daylight savings time. And uh, we'll, I'll try it. We'll be talking about the Toledo Reptile Show. And uh, thanks, everyone. That's right. Tomorrow morning, we talk about a product review. Don't miss. Very <laughs> early, but don't miss it. <laughs>